um, like the presentation that Sister Ruth brought forth. Um, very good. I mean, I'm always looking for new ways to explain where I come from and where I got to go eventually when I evolve. Um, tonight's presentation will deal with some things that you all may have heard on the radio several times when I was on WRG, but there's a time where I have to expand out so I can make sure that people get the information because I put it like this in so many different ways on being cut off, whether positively or negatively. So I have to make sure that there's an avenue where I can come to express myself and bring forth some of this information that a lot of people who call in and call me all the time are feeling. Now, if there were any of my students in the room, I mean, they're, they're totally being harmed because they, I, I go over this all the time with them because the martial art I teach is very deep and scientific and very spiritual. But I won't go too much into that until after this. The title of this seminar or lecture, whatever you prefer to call it, is dealing with earth, earth changes. Various things that are being taken or being changed on this planet to make sure that it moves to fourth density. Some people may call it fourth dimension, but I know exactly what they're talking about. So we're moving to fourth density. That means that the matter as we see it now, or lower vibratory energy, will vibrate to a higher level of manifestation. That means that it will have a much different meaning to you dealing with fourth density. Now, fourth dimension, that's a totally different thing. Because when you deal with the fourth dimension, dimension, you're dealing with the astral plane. On the astral plane, that's where everything that has existed, it exists now and will eventually exist. That's the world. This is one of the main places where you go when you, when they call it dream or have your visions. This is one of the main places or one of the classrooms that you go to in the universe to receive knowledge while you're here on the planet learning also. And so that's, in dealing with fourth dimension, you're on a much higher level of manifestation. There is no time. That's why all things exist up there at one time because the higher you go mentally, the slower and slower time as we see gets. So when someone is looking at this planet from a, from a fourth, fifth dimensional or higher dimensional level above it, things seem very slow, frozen. No different than these books standing in one place. And this is how other entities have been able to, in so many words, manipulate life on this planet because they understand the science of the dimensions. They know how to tap into different worlds because they also have higher entities that work for their favor. In the universe, on the spirit world, you have your positive and your negative, just like it does when it comes down to this level. You always have the positive and negative. Without one, you cannot understand the other, vice versa. That's the way it is. There's universal law. Don't take it up with me. Take it up with the creator. <laughs> okay. At this time, I'm sure you all have been hearing a lot about different earthquakes, volcanoes, all different types of worldly disasters. Now, the media tells you to take this as something very negative and something very bad. Mm -mm. If the media or the powers that be tell you something bad, you better think it's good. If they tell you not to eat something, you better eat it. Because there's a reason why they're trying to keep you away from it. Now, during this time, coming all the way up to now, it said in 2012, this is where the time for this dimension, or basically when a dimensional portal or a higher vibratory portal is open. And for all of those who have attained knowledge, whatever path you choose, because I realize that everyone may not take the same path as I take, people may take other paths. I started off in Christianity at one time, went through Islam, went through Buddhism, went through Taoism, went through the Vedic scriptures, and then eventually I found the ancient Kemetic way. And I've been there ever since, but I've been growing also. And every holy book or scriptures has a piece of the truth. It's rather you are going to be the individual to go deep with inside that truth and pull out what you need. Because you're only going to overstand things according to your state of consciousness. So if you don't vibrate on a certain level, certain stuff you may not get. But the more and more you, you contemplate and meditate on the information that you have read, 
and that you have accumulated, you eventually start to vibrate higher. You will see different examples out here in the world that will show you the truth in any scripture. All you have to do is pay attention and stay away from people that claim that they can teach you the one way. Ain't no one way. There's never been a one way. The science of being or the original religion before all of these other monstrosities sprang up was you choosing your path, you choosing your way. You think, eat, do, and vibrate differently than anyone else. Doesn't mean that you're higher or lower. See, we have souls, and souls give you the ability to be an individual, yet we're all one, because we're all connected to that source that everything comes from. But having a soul, we're able to take things at our rate and do things according to the way we would do them. The minute that you allow someone to tell you what you should do, that's no different than adultery in the Bible. It can be overstood physically and mentally. You have a union of the masculine and feminine in your mind or the subconscious and conscious mind. The minute you allow someone to come in and impregnate their thoughts in your mind, that's mental adultery. Y'all follow me? Okay. <laughs> All right. Now, there's some things that I want to go over with you first before we get deeper into the lesson here. Now, with all the different energies hitting the planet coming from the soul, as well as other different star systems, it's time for us to get our crap together. It's been time. There are times when you could be a higher manifestation of melanin, or having a higher man manifestation of melanin inside of you. We could have raised them a long time ago. Didn't happen that way. There are a lot of things taking place that are meant to happen. There's a reason why all of you are here. There's a reason why all of us are different colors. There's a reason why all of us are different in shape and size, because we need to, in so many words, experience life from different perspectives for what we need to learn from a soul level. Now, approaching or coming with the individual, in order for us to raise higher in vibration, we need to work with the DNA. At the end of this lecture, I will give you a couple of herbs and remedy, remedies that you can partake of that will help you to unite your DNA strands. Because you cannot go to a higher level of manifestation without working with the DNA. That's first. Because the DNA, all 64 parts of it, or 64 codons, tells what you can do, what you can't do, what you will be able to do, what you can grasp, what you may have knowledge of, what you could have, have knowledge of, how you're going to look, how you're going to act. Now, it's, it's important to understand that you can change and shape your DNA, but you have to be on a higher manifestation of consciousness in order to do that. You just can't take knowledge and say, well, since I know this, it's going to happen. You got to put some work in. You have to experience things. You have to go through a, a lesson in so many words as to whatever it is that you're trying to accomplish. That's when it becomes wisdom. Wisdom is something that's been tried out and you found that it works for you or someone else, but most importantly you, because it helps you to get to a higher manifestation. Now it's said in science that the DNA has 64 parts of 64 codons that, re that respond to it. But most humans on this planet only use 20. And those 20 codons only refer to, in so many words, mind states like when I'm going to eat next, when I'm going to get paid, when I'm screwing the next. You know, lower base passions. But if you know how to tap it and go within yourself and stimulate thought and meditate, you can unite these other parts of the DNA. And you will find that you have a knowledge of vast things. Like, I've never went to school you know, to learn how to hook up appliances and stereos, but it's just something that came to me. I've been doing this since I was seven years old. Nobody ever talked to me, I just know. And see, we're in the age of I know, or going to the age of I know, which is Aquarius. No matter how much information you learn, eventually you're gonna have to go within yourself and make sure that you make it true. Don't take my word for it. If you have to research it yourself, you do that. Because if you take my word for it without investigation, I'm no different than a preacher in the church. I can tell you anything and you'll do it just like that. And I have met people who have treated me that way, like I just knew something more than them. Now you know it. It's just that you forgot. It's already in you. You can tap into your cells. Listen to your body. Listen to 
self. Take a good 15, 30 minutes a day or even longer than that and just sit in the quiet, in the dark. And you'll be surprised what comes to you. You'll be answering questions that even the average scientist can't answer because they're only using intellect. And so with intellect, you can only go so far. You see what I'm saying? You need spirit there. You need an inner guidance. Now, what shuts us off from uniting our DNA strands is negative emotions. Period. Emotions of fear, displacement, the I can't do this, I can't do that. You know, the fear of thinking that you can't do things yourself, you shut yourself off from higher frequencies that were already here. See, the things that are happening to the planet now, it was always there, it's just that it's being intensified now. And this is probably going to be one of the best slash deadliest planetary changes ever. Because this planet has been knocked off its evolutionary course several times by certain entities. Because you have to understand planets like Earth, and it's said to exist 22 or 23 of them in the known universe. There are planets that are specifically designed to house all different types of life, from the smallest to the biggest. Every plant, every animal, everything can come to this planet. This planet, at one time, was somewhat like a penal colony. You don't believe me? Read the Bible when it said, when it was talking about in Revelations when they fought Satan or the dragon, and once they kicked his butt, where did they send him? In the earth. This was a place where you came to learn about the negative karma that you had placed on yourself as well as the universe, and you come here to work through it, to evolve. But see, once they realized nobody was going to stop them, they tried to take over. They were like, okay, I'm going to go do this again, you know? But it's important to understand that in order for this transformation to take place, your DNA has to be united. Now they say that you have junk DNA. Ain't no such thing as no junk DNA. You're just not using it. Now they only tell you about the two strands that you have, but actually there are 12. 12 higher strands. Once you're able to unite the 64 codons within the two strands that we're working with now, see most of us in here are probably working with three or four and don't even realize it. Because for you to be here and to be in this place at this time, you're thinking on a much higher level than most people. I know for a fact that myself I'm working with at least three or four, maybe five. Because there are things that I've been able to do and accomplish that I know other humans haven't done because they don't pay attention to it. Now, once you can unite those, then you get deeper into the higher strands where you can shape shift. I'm sure you heard stories of the gods changing form, where you can shape shift, where you can tap into higher forms of thoughts, higher, fo higher forms of information. See, with our souls, we should, we should be able to tap right into the soul or the inner fire of the earth and learn anything necessary or learn anything that has ever happened on this planet. And I know most of us do, but a lot of people are too lazy to put that attention there because they're afraid. They're not afraid of something negative happening to them. It's just when you show a person for a long time, over a period of time, that they've always had the power to raise themselves and then nobody else have to do it for them, they get scared. Because now, for all the negative things they do, they got to pay for it eventually. And they don't want to face that reality. But eventually you face it. It's whether you're going to be conscious to it, to it or not. But see, the thing is, when you do negative things or bring negative karma on yourself, that's when you use dharma. That's when you put in your mind what you did and go through it there. And realize that you will eventually pay. But if you're conscious of what you did, it might not be that bad. But if you're running out here blind and thinking you can get away with anything, and all of a sudden you sit to think, hey, I shouldn't have did that, that's when it hits you, right there. That's when it hits you. So watch your thoughts. Think positively. But be real. Be true to yourself. Be who you are. Now, with the changes that are taking place, men will become more balanced. Now, you have a lot of people who claim they're so-called I mean, conscious that think, that men don't have no place once they learn that woman is the gateway. That is the biggest bunch of bullshit I've ever heard. Excuse my language, but that's the truth. 
You have a lot of people, you have a lot of women out here that think that just because the fact they got the gateway, that they better than us. We serve no purpose. We do serve a purpose. We serve a very important purpose. We're not here just because others may think we're a freak of nature. Remember, we come from mother. So if mother got certain powers, we can tap into them as well as you want to do it. It's all, it's all depending on whether you desire to do something for yourself or not. And this is a time where men will become more psychic, more intuitive, more in touch with themselves. And I'm sure the brothers sitting in here right now got to be in touch with themselves to be here, especially to listen to what I got to say. They didn't have to be here, you know? <laughs> you know? So being that men are becoming more balanced, men will be able to tap into the higher realms just as women can. But see, you have to remember that there are certain things that man can do, certain things that woman can do. We have our differences. That's because of the fact we're meant to have the strengths that the other one don't have. That's why we are so important to each other. The minute you think that you need to be separated from each other, you just violated universal law, and your ass will get got, period. So if there's anyone out here that thinks that man ain't nothing, okay, how am I up here doing this? You see what I'm saying? How are other brothers like Bob Hammond and other people who have been through here, C. Freeman L., how are they able to put out information? Because they're able to go within, go through soul, go through spirit and pull out information. We research a lot of things, but most of the things I'm telling you is from experience and what I've gone through and what I've remembered, not only in this lifetime, but other lifetimes. Now, there are some other things that we need to understand, especially dealing with time. Now, when the Gregorian calendar was made, it took us off our natural cycle, which at one time was said was supposed to be 13 months. They dropped it to 12 which naturally throws you off once you try to grasp their concept of time. See, at every holiday that is on a calendar, that is a day that they're doing certain rituals to keep you enslaved, to bring in certain energy to keep them alive, because they're not originators. They got to use us in order to get what they need. Because in so many words, after that main war, 93 billion years ago, as it said, they were shut off from the higher frequencies. So everything they get, they have to go through technology, extreme technology to get. But there's one thing that they can't access that we can, and that's spirit. That's the psychic energy. And they have to use us to bring that in for them. So every time you think a negative thought, every time you think about harming someone, every time, well, or harming someone for the purposes of negativity, because you have to defend yourself. Don't get me wrong. but. The moment you start thinking negative frequencies like you ain't nothing, you ain't this, in so many words, they got higher dimensional demons and workers that feed off that negative energy and make sure that they interface with your superconscious mind, which is your spirit, to make sure that you willingly create the hell that you have or that some of you may have. But most of you in here look pretty happy, so I ain't worried about that. You know, y'all look real good. I see some of you glowing in here, so. But that's pretty much what is taking place. Now, with them taking you off this 13th cycle, you know, it puts us out of whack. It puts us out of connection with the earth. And it definitely has us on a deeper moon cycle than what we're supposed to be on. See, these entities use the moon energy against us. See, we're solar children. We're supposed to receive all our instructions from the creator through the sun. The soul that we see in the sky, the soul that's in the earth, and the soul that's here. Direct relay stations. And the soul of our solar system receives souls or information from other suns. All linking back to the grand central sun where all instructions come from. Now, if they can mess up the calendar and keep you from tapping into this force, you'll be out of whack. And that's why we haven't been able to tap into our deeper powers and to be able to just, um, overstand nature. Nature is simple to overstand, but it's all the negative technology that separates us from it. See, you ain't got to levitate no more. They got airplanes. You, gotta, you, you, you don't have to teleport. They got other vehicles for that. 
You don't have to communicate by telepathy or telementation. They got telephones. They made sure that because they understand that within the DNA, in order for your higher powers to work, you have to be exercising them at all times. So if they can create something to make sure that the same thing that you have within you, that you had within all the time, they have to make sure that that is shut off. It's not to say that you can't tap into it, but they make sure things are shut off so you won't tap into it. Because the higher you become and the higher you vibrate and the more you know, the weaker they become. And that's one of the reasons why they're trying to stop us from going to fourth density. Because once we hit fourth density, we on a low. They don't want another battle like, like what happened 93 billion years ago. They don't want another one of those when the first humans rebelled against them on other star systems. Now see, your Star Wars stories and all of that, don't take that for fantasy. That stuff happened, is happening, and is going to happen. Period. So get used to it. It's not to say that you should grab a lightsaber and a laser blaster and join the fight. Just be conscious of what's going on. You know? Now, with this 13-month cycle that they took us off of and brought us to 12, they're said that there's a 13th astrological sign that there is, miss that there is missing. And the, one of the symbols for this 13th astrological sign was that of the spider's web. And what that symbolized was all the astrological powers of all the signs coming into one. All your various prophets have had this energy. They may have been born at a time of this and that, Aries or whatever, but they came at a time during a certain cycle where they had all those energies connected in all of them, period. Now we all have all the tendencies and negativities that all astrological signs have. It's just that when we're born, one particular sign like me, Gemini, is most dominant. But it's not to say that the others shouldn't be paid attention to because they're all balanced. You come through a certain sign to learn a certain lesson in the lifetime that you choose to be in at this time. You ain't just thrown here. On a high level, you chose to be here. Now, here's where it gets kind of deep, and I've lost a lot of people. Now, in modern science, they have told you that the sun is this big, fiery ball in the center of our solar system that's composed of hydrogen and helium. Y'all can see by my expressions that I'm not at all buying that crap. I'm just letting y'all know what they say. And that the sun is very, very, very high and blah, 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 blah. Now, with what I've studied with metaphysics and being on a level of understanding that I'm on, I've come to find, yeah, the sun gives off a high amount of energy, but it all depends on how you want to look at it. Now, have you ever wondered that when the sun, when we are furthest away from the sun, it's summer. When we are closest, it's winter. Now, they say that, yeah, I'm not even going to go into that, but basically they say that this is how it's supposed to occur. Now, you have to remember modern science, scientists are guessers. They deal with some type of screwed up theory. It ain't necessarily true, but since they got all their different degrees and different things, most of us think they know everything. They don't. Now, from what I've learned, now, if the sun was supposed to be this big ass ball of heat, how come this planet Mercury ain't burned up yet? Now, if heat kick us, kick our butt in the summer, imagine what go on here. And Mercury is so small. How come Mercury hasn't burned up yet? Think about it. Now they say that Venus is hot. Hotter than Mercury. That don't make no damn sense. Because Mercury is closer. But they say this planet gives off more heat or has more heat than Mercury. They run you and they shift you and you be like, well, I, got, I guess I got to take what they say because they know more than I do. No, they don't. But from what I've been taught, just like every planet, I only drew three here, I'm, I'm living in the space. Every planet has a soul or a sun. The reason why they call it a sun rather than a soul 
is to invoke more masculine energy so you don't pay attention to the mother. That's why they call it son. Just because you spell it S-U-N versus S-O-N, it's the same word sound. It's the same meaning, period. I'm told that the sun is composed, has its own world, consisting of 13 high vibratory worlds, with one in the middle making 13, that gives out so much energy to the point that with our state of consciousness, it looks like a ball in the sky. But the reason why it looks like a ball in the sky for us, just like you have Earth, we have the atmosphere and all the different layers that go from there. Now I'm going to get into what causes the heat that we feel from the sun rays. Now, you can do this for an experiment. Take a flashlight that has maybe a square or a rectangular um, bulb or glass. Take a glass bulb, put it on the table, shine that light over that bulb. No matter how that flashlight is shaped, it always comes out circular. So basically, it's the atmosphere or the levels around our planet that make it seem like a ball. But really, in you ever wonder why in space they don't show you the sun when they send when the NASA scientists go up there? Even and I even saw a picture with my contacts that showed the sun. The sun didn't look, look nothing like what we see. If anything. From what I saw, it was just like a little ball. Last year, they had a special on Channel 5 or Fox 5 talking about the conspiracy of the cover up of what actually happened on the moon when astronauts went up there. And if you paid attention to the pictures, <coughs> when they showed the sun, you saw energy, but it wasn't no ball like we see it. You see what I'm saying? So they know what's up because NASA is a part of a, organ of, of a bigger organization that most of us can't even fathom. It's for the purposes to keep you disinformed of what really is going on. This is how they keep our left brain closed off from the right brain. Now, say this is the atmosphere with the long ozone layer. This is Earth, or Tiamat, which is one of its original names. Earth is a name responding, responding or corresponding to any celestial or any body. So Jupiter can be called an Earth, but his name is Jupiter. We are on a Earth, but it's called Tiamat. Another name is Terra or Terra Firma or Sean. Has so many different names depending on what scriptures you read, but it just ain't Earth. Okay. Now with our ozone layer and our atmosphere, when our soul or sun beams energy, it's not just beaming off heat as you've been told. What the suns get, remember I told you that all suns are connected, they're like relay beacons. They not only beam what we call or what they give off as light, they beam consciousness, they beam instructions. Basically, every soul within every planet that is hollow receives specific instructions. With these instructions, it is said the type of life that's going to be seated on that planet, type of weather patterns, type of land, you name it, is included within those instructions. Now, what causes heat is not the sun rays on its own, it's infrared beams. Now, when our soul is trying to beam in consciousness, and you got these idiots trying to block it out of so many words with these chemtrails and all of this, anywhere it go, these rays are going to fight through at whatever extent that it needs to go through. They're going to fight through. Now, when it comes in through this negative atmosphere we have, it causes friction. With friction, what is given off? Heat. Same thing occurs on that level, and that's what we feel. That's exactly what we feel. So, like I say, you ain't got to take my word for it. Do your research. And you can start off on basic things. You can start off in the encyclopedia. 
The minute you see key words that don't sound right, research it. That's what I did. And plus, with the help of Dr. Delbert Blair, I don't understand it. Not to spend so much time on that, because I got a lot to cover. <laughs> now, also from each soul or son, there is admitted, what is admitted from each son or soul is a pulse similar to a heartbeat. And this pulse, in so many words, or what we hear, or what they hear at um, the different observatories, is just this vibration. To give an example, I don't know how many of you can do this, but if you sit in the room, quiet, turn off the TV, radio, some of you should be able to hear like a buzz in your ear. What that is, that's your pineal gland vibrating at a high state, and it shows that you are vibrating, that you've been doing what you were supposed to do, no matter what the heck you're eating or what you're partaking of, when that pineal gland is inside of your head, you have reached a high manifestation. You just need to get conscious of it. That same that's in your ears that you hear is the same thing given, being given off by the sun. And this is to make sure that at certain times when we go through the 26,000 year cycle, is to make sure that things are aligned. And the universe is going to send whoever to make sure that things are aligned. Because what affects one affects the all. Don't think for a minute that just because we're going through our issues here on this planet that nobody else feels it. Mental energy is the most powerful energy in the universe. Just a negative thought of yours. You ever walk into a room and just throw out a certain thought and see how people latch on to it? It's the same thing in the universe. And don't think just because you're small and minute to the rest of the universe that they can't pick up your thoughts, especially negative thoughts, like the stress signals. That's how they pick it up. And so when things are out of whack, the universe makes sure that certain things happen to make sure that you and the rest of the planet and the solar system and the universe is rebalanced. Now, here's where it gets a little deeper. This same signal that they've been, this same signal or this pulse I'm talking about, they've been tracking since the 1800s. And every time that this thing has, in so many words, ray, ray, risen, they've gotten scared. Like when the information I got here, you know, in so many words, your heart beats. Your heart can be like it. The heartbeat that you have can be likened to a drum. Occurs on, like I say, everything occurs on the highest to the lowest and reverse. The way that you receive these energies and overstand them is through the heart chakra. Now, if a lot of you or some of you have been dealing with chakras, you find that chakras are just energy vortex that exist, energy vortexes that exist, that exist on higher dimensions of ourselves. See, us with souls, we can exist on several different levels at once. They say seven, but it might be even more than that. You know, that, those are just the seven that we can comprehend at this moment. Once we go to fourth density, we may overstand more, and it might be more than that. You know, because you got some life out there that has more than 12 DNA strands. They got 24. Happens in 12. Now, it is said that with what we're going through in the universe, every 26,000 years or so, we have gone through every particular astrological sign or astrological energy, which takes us exactly, I think it's 2,160 years to go through. That means that all lessons that not only the people or the life on that planet, but the, the planet itself has learned what it needs to learn is supposed to graduate or go to a higher density. But as I've said, other individuals have made sure that you won't hit that level. The 26,000 year cycle is the time where the end of it, or well, at the end of it, opens a dimensional gateway into a higher level of existence, existence and consciousness. The Hindus, Yogis, Chinese, Mayan, Kamishans, the Moors even knew about this. They've always known about it. And it, it's in every 
particular holy book you read where it talks about things like the different earthquakes, the three days of darkness and the three days of light, which I'll get to in a couple of moments. Confirmed in 1991, there was detected a new frequency emanating from the center of our galaxy that since 1994 has been causing different solar flare activity, increasing X-ray bursts, and also this has caused a decrease in the soul of and the sun and all the planets, including Earth, a decrease in their magnetic field, causing a planetary pole shift. What I basically just said there, that every 2,000, maybe 3,000 years or so, and especially dealing with these 26,000 year cycles, the magnetic field of the planets and the suns decrease. The reason why, they don't tell you, but even this sun or the soul even revolves. It even spins. Now they said that much, but what, what they tell us is spinning, that's the thing. They tell us that the big ball is spinning. But no, all of these high vibratory worlds are spinning. Now, the sun is cooling and the planets are heating up. I repeat again, the sun is cooling and the planets are heating up. Planet heat comes from within. Meanwhile, the planet has also begun to rotate slower, which decreases the magnetic field. Mm. Now, I'm sure you all have noticed that we're not exactly on a 24 hour a day cycle anymore. Sometimes it seems like it's 16 hours, sometimes it seems like it's less than that. But the planet is slowing down and the higher vibratory energy is hitting the planet and that's why it seems like everything is going fast. I've seen people who are like 80 years old, now I'm doing 75 in the car and they <coughs> flipping past me and, I, and it seems like I'm going slow and they choo 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 I'm like, where the hell is everybody going? You know, the energy is increasing so the, the faster you vibrate, the faster you move, okay? The base resonant frequency, which is the, um, the pulse I'm talking about, or the Earth's heartbeat, was detected to be at seven cycles per second as of 1899. Between that time till 1987, it increased until in 1995, it was recorded to be at eight cycles per second. And now it's at 10 cycles per second. By 2010, it is said that this pulse may be at 13 cycles per second. And that's an interesting number because you've heard plenty of times that 13 is always referred to as the number of the creator. But if you add one and three, you get four. We're making that step from the one through the three and going to the fourth density. See, a lot of people see these ancient wise ones as primitive because they didn't use the same type of technology we did. They were very advanced. They didn't want certain types of technology here because they knew that it would hinder their growth and also change the planet. But see, the, the individuals who are making sure or trying to make sure that we stay low, they know that too. At the same time, the magnetic field in 2012 may be at zero. And guess what? This same phenomenon has happened before. As a matter of fact, it has occurred 14 times within the fast four within the past 4.5 million years. The last taking place 11,000 to 13,000 years ago. Now if you do your math and you do your astrology, that will place you in the Libra cycle. That was the last time that anyone on this planet saw Atlantis above ground. Judgment, that's what you're dealing with with Libra. And Atlantis or the Atlantean people had intermingled with some of the wrong individuals and was using technology for negative ways. Now when you hear these Buddhists and these Hindus in their books talk about the weapons that can turn a city into glass, that's why we got deserts here. There have been wars fought on this planet countless times before to control it. Nuclear weapons is nothing new. There's nothing new under the sun. If you do your research correctly, you will find that this same technology with ray beams, like the Heart Project, nuclear missiles, cobalt missiles, this stuff is nothing new. We think it's new because they release it slowly to make us think that we're advancing. And they only giving us 
in so many words, like the hand-me-downs of what they already had probably millions of years ago, you know? Now see, while we're evolving in our rate, there are other planets that are 10 times higher than what we manifest, you see what I'm saying? And they have either higher forms of technology or have gone to, gone to a higher level of spiritual clarity or spiritual balance. And the most important thing to understand here is do not expect nothing except, always accept. See, when we get too caught up in expecting things, we get disappointed when things don't go our way. It's better to accept. You got to take it as it comes. If you don't want to do it consciously, do it subconsciously. But that's how it happens. That's the way it's going to go. That's the way it's going to be. When changes of this time, or the, of this kind occurs, it has been recorded that the Earth stops rotating for three days. This has been recorded by the Chinese, Hindus, the Moors, the Peruvians, you name it. This is what is meant by the three days of darkness and the three days of light. Also at this time, the earth begins to spin in the opposite direction as recorded by the ancients. 2,000 years ago, the last time that this one of these cycles happened, the, um, in the Vedic scriptures it said that the sun used to rise in the west and set in the east. But see, you let other people tell you that it's always rose in the east and set in the west. Uh-uh. All planets reverse their direction and go back the other way. Different frequencies. We're coming out of a time where, I guess you could say, more masculine energy was directed towards us. More technology or more concrete things. When we're dealing with a more feminine cycle, we're getting into more of the hidden things, the things that you never thought were out there. And that's what's happening now. You pay attention to yourself. Like I said, you will come up with all types of answers to the most complicated questions. Also, with the increase of the solar flares, the sun's magnetic field has also decreased to about zero and seemingly converted from hydrogen to helium, so far. The solar flare energy is being emitted exactly from 19.5 degrees latitude above the sun's equator. This is the same degree latitude of the exchange of the soul energy that is being to all the planets. This is also the, exact, the same exact degree point that all the pyramids are placed on. At the same time, we are also moving through the photon belt. Remember the period of no time that they talk about. Now through all this, it's going to seem as though time is speeding up. Now notice, when they constructed all the pyramids, like you had pyramids all over, north and south of the equator, but the biggest ones were always located 19.5 degrees from the equator. That is said to be that on every planet, the hollow, or within the hollow of every planet, that's where your so-called soul or son of the planet is located right smack in the middle. Right on the equator is where the sun's soul, or where, where the planet's soul or sun is. Now also here, you have polar opening, which they really don't like to get into, but they put out a lot of TV shows dealing with it. So they don't like to tell you about stuff directly, but they'll show it to you in a movie, because you won't take it as serious. But your subconscious be like, hey, this, this is really happening. Nah, I know it ain't. And you actually rebel against yourself. You know, they always say the first impression is the last. That spirit telling you whether something is good or something is bad. But they teach you that, nah, that's prejudice. Nah, prejudice is when I judge a person or something before I even had a chance to come to it. Intuition and psychic energy or psychic thoughts that's totally different. When you meet a person, you get a foul energy from them, chances are that's where it's going to be if they don't change. You know? And that's the same thing that is happening. Now, with this energy being, being, being straight to our soul of the planet, remember I told you the soul of the planet is consciousness, or the soul energy period is consciousness. The earth is a living entity. 
Matter of fact, the spherical shape, I'm told, is one of the most complex bodies that can ever exist in the universe. And just like we have chakras, the planets have chakras. Going all the way around. Planet has six. We make the seven. Because every thought we have, whether it's negative or positive, affects the planet that we're on. We're more powerful than they tell you. They don't want you to know this because if a group of individuals knew that, okay, I create this, well, why don't a group of us think positively and change it? It can happen just like that. But most of us don't want to work together because we've been taught separation through, through money, through social status, even through color. And, and it's deep when I talk about this, especially with the color thing, because I am aware deeply of what Europeans or Caucasians have done to us, but I am aware of what people who look like us have done too before they were even put in power. How does that make it any better? I guess when we enslave ourselves, it's okay. But as soon as a white dude do it, oh, it's an issue. Slavery is still negative. Slavery is when you make a person do something against their will for your satisfaction and for your accumulation of wealth. That is wrong. I don't give a damn how you want to look at it. Well, uh, what we did, we would take the slaves for a short time and send them home. But you still had them. It still don't make any sense. You see what I'm saying? At this time, you need to trust someone. I, with the information I'm bringing forth, and information that I have brought forth before, I've met people of different walks of life various different colors who have helped me in my journey. Not, not only people that look like me or have my color, I've been helped by people who are damn near albino. It all depends on the state of consciousness of the individual. They ain't, I ain't telling you to go out there and grab the first white person you see or the first albino you see or the first person of a different ethnic group and just, hey, I'm going to let, nah, it's not that simple. What I'm saying here is being open. Be open. You never know who or what type of soul that individual has. That individual may have been placed in front of you at a certain time to teach you a certain lesson that you need to get to a higher level. If you discriminate them, like see, I know some people who discriminate on a brother, your color, your color, your color. And since y'all lighter than me or lighter than that person, y'all bad. It's dumb. There's nothing that exists on this planet that does not have melanin. Period. Everything has that carbon-based atom in it. Everything absorbed. Now, according, now, depending on the level of melanin you have would determine what you can use with higher energy, but that ain't it. You got to have a state of consciousness. I know a Caucasian dude now that can come in here with his mind cut these lights off. I've seen him do it. Because of his state of consciousness, he uses what he has in order to get to the level that he's going to. And the minute you start thinking that just because I got this and just because I got that, that makes me better, uh-uh. Because there are other entities out there in the universe that don't even have the color that you have and can vaporize you with a thought. So don't ever think that you're too great just because you got melanin and you got a soul. Never think that. That's when the ego takes place. And you will draw all types of things to you that will test that theory. And eventually, you will be devoured, either physically or by the universal laws itself. Remember that. Now, it is said in metaphysics that the universe, as well as the physical world, is a hologram composed of 64 waves or beams of light that collide to form what we call the material world, or creates the patterns we call the material world. Now remember at the beginning of this lecture, I told you about the 64 codons of the DNA. Now, if you have more of these particular parts of your DNA vibrating and you're using, that's going to determine what you see more than the next individual. See, numbers, when, when they throw up numbers, don't take them for joke. Numbers have energy and vibrations just like words and just like other different manifestations. 
In the Chinese book known as the Yi Jing, which is a form of Chinese metaphysics, it is said that the 64 hexagram determines the various changes in the universe from the highest level to the lowest level. And also how that everything in the universe, including man, is composed of these same 64 hexagrams and how with knowledge and wisdom, these 64 hexagrams can be used to create the spiritual baby or the true rebirth, which is born again. Now, I know this because a while back I studied a Chinese style dealing with the eight trigrams or the eight, you know, trigrams of the Chinese science known as the Yi Jing. It's called the eight diagram palm. And in order to understand how each particular technique works, you had to get into the science of what a particular trigram stood for. Well, it was fire. Fire is more intense. Water, more fluid, moves around things, can change its form. When you deal with the mountain, your root and your stance is supposed to be as compared to the strength of a mountain. But with the wind, your feet moves as quick as the wind and stops just like it does with the wind. And when I was studying this, the first thing I said to the guy I learned it from, hey, this is pretty much how the universe works. He didn't say nothing. Now that I've done my research, I was right, just that this dude didn't tell me. Because one thing you ever understand about some people who bring forth knowledge, sometimes they get this negative mind state and think that they can't teach others information. But I've learned with the universal laws, there's a law called the law of usage. And what this um, corresponds to is that when you have information that you can share that can uplift people and help people to get to a level of manifestation like you are and higher, you got to give it to them. Find whatever way you want to, but give it to them and not that same knowledge that you have would devour you. Because for everything we learn, we can use it and apply it in some way. So if you have something to offer, don't be scared. Even if you got to put out a secret newsletter, do it that way. But put it out there. You never know who may bite onto it and use it. Now, what I mean by the, the birth of the new or the spiritual baby, now, how many of you believe that gravity is what holds us to this planet? Raise your hand. Don't, don't be afraid. I don't think the camera will catch you, but, you know. <laughs> how many of you believe that gravity is what keeps us to this planet? Okay, I got one. You mean tell me I only got one person in here? <laughs> Two. <laughs> Three. Okay. All right. Now, they've told you in so many words that gravity is what keeps you to the planet. But remember that these same sciences are created by the same people that keep you enslaved. So you can't really take anything they say for face value. I'll explain it simple like this. The earth has a soul. You have a soul. Now it is said that once you rescind all karma and learn all the lessons, lessons that you have come here to learn, eventually you can leave and exit the earth whenever you want to by soul power. This is what it means when it talks about the angels or the angles or anglos, whatever you wish to call them, they were light benders. They were able to travel back and forth through the various dimensions and various densities and these are some of the main individuals that make sure that the universe is guarded, even though you got, you got the negative aspect of them. But the angles are what been light. Now, they've been light at 90 degrees. So, you take one angle or angel, he go that way. Take another one, he come this way, go that way. Take another one, boom, boom, he goes that way. Got another one, boom, boom. What is that form? Well, excuse the drawing, but um, five, the four-pointed or, or basically the cross. Now, in order to manipulate that energy, you got individuals that come and intersect me that way, come that way, come that way. What do they look like? The English style. Thank you. A flag will tell you a lot about where an individual comes from and what they represent. 
The British monarchy is what runs the world right now. Don't think just because they're in real small Europe that they ain't got a hand in this. They run all of this. They run everything according to universal law, but we don't see it because we don't know law. The only thing we know is the damn Bible. <laughs> we, we can tell you the minute what preacher told us, but I can't tell you what I know because he the only one that can tell me. That's my way to salvation. Mm. Now, as I was saying before, just to give you briefly what that was, say you're an individual. So I'm going to stick with it here. Sort of happy, don't I? <laughs> this individual has a soul. Now, until this individual learns what he needs to learn, he will always be earth, always, or she will always be earthbound. Always be earthbound. But the more this individual comes into knowing of itself and understanding everything around it, the lighter the soul becomes. The lighter the soul becomes, the more and more it can separate from this. It's similar to the umbilical cord that you have inside the mother when you're in the womb. When you're ready to come out, the umbilical cord is snapped. The child exists. Same thing, but just occurring on a higher level. Yeah. If you take 64 times 6, you get 384. That number in the predictions is said to be the number of days within the period close to 2012 that lots of waves of light, which means energy and consciousness, would be present more and more on the planet. I think time has been so out of whack. I think we're closer to 2012 than what they tell us. That's why they switched up the calendar so we don't know what time it is. Now, after that, there will be a six-day cycle with increased consciousness bombarding the planet, which means that things will speed up pretty much like now. The vibratory rate of the planet will increase more, leading up to the last 135 minutes, then to the last... 0 0.0075 seconds when 13 different changes will occur. That's that number 13 again. Now, in the midst of all these changes, the powers that be command their slaves, media, newspapers, whoever, to blame the changes on phenomena like El Nino, La Nina, and the greenhouse effect, global warming. All they need, or all they needed was, some, okay, all they needed is something to divert your consciousness or divert the consciousness of humans, especially solar children, into a bigger state of illusion as we speak. Uh-oh, now let me, let me put it, make sure I don't leave that. Now, I'm sure everybody has heard about El Nino, La Nino, La Nino, whatever they call it. This is just the planet's way of increasing, of, of, of cleansing itself. What is the purpose of a fever? The fever that you have heats up the body so it can fight off impurities. The earth is doing the same thing. What we call volcano eruptions, it's just in so many words like cysts and different pimples when, they, when the pus is busting out and making sure that it can cleanse itself, you know, and do what it needs to do. Now, the powers that be have top technology so advanced you would not believe. And several times, they have changed the atmosphere just as they're doing now. They can control the weather to an extent. But see, when you're dealing with intellect and no spirituality, you don't think about the repercussions of things. You just do it because it seems cool. Then it backfires on them. See, the main thing that they're trying to do with the different chemtrails and all this stuff is to have an everlasting cloud cover. So their true selves can come out. Now, I'll do another lecture on that, but pretty much... I'll just state it like this. What animal in the animal kingdom that you know that needs extreme humidity and that is cold-blooded? And I'll leave it at that. Oops. Well, hey, I know you're listening. You see what I'm saying? Um, it's good that you brought that out. So that way, when I get ready to come back whenever with a lecture dealing with the power that be, I know somebody ain't in the dark, ain't in the dark, and you could probably help me on that. You see what I'm saying? Now, see, everybody wants to talk about the negativity in the world, but don't nobody want to go to the source. 
The minute you say reptilian or this or that or the Illuminati and certain people, they act like they don't even acknowledge it. Now, I read books by David Icke. I don't trust everything David Icke say because he only has he has a limit on certain things. Some things he just hasn't researched yet. Yeah. But one thing I can say about him, he gets as close to the truth just like Morris Science. They may not be the total truth, but they get you at least 75% there. At least 85%. And he'll tell you in a minute how he was talking to Zachariah Sitchkin. And how when Zachariah Sitchkin was writing his book, talking about the Anunnaki, Anunnaki and the existence of so-called reptile gods, he told Ike he didn't believe in it. Then he looked at him and said, don't go there. What are they telling you? He know. It's just that certain people are afraid to leak the information out. But you know what? They ain't the only ones that got to do it. They've had movies like V and other movies dealing with shapes of reptiles that are in disguise here to, to, to manipulate all their resources and take the humans for food. They ain't the same damn thing happening now. I don't know what it is. If you don't see it now, don't worry about it. Eventually you will. <laughs> Eventually you're going to have to. Now, during this time, they got to make sure that they put something out there mainstream to the virtual consciousness. Now, I don't know if a lot of people have grasped on to it, but there are a lot of different publications out there for the so-called New Age community. These different things are being used at this time to divert people's consciousness. They got people worshiping aliens. What you think those people in um, what part of California, I forget, when they were worshiping the aliens and they castrated themselves and the women sold up their vaginas because they say that the people that they're descended from didn't have it, which was the grades. Okay, and that the only way that they could get off the planet was through killing themselves so their soul can get on the comet. I'll get to that in a minute because shit went real, and I'll put it strictly like that. Now, also within this new age religion, they got you worshiping different, in so many words, people or certain aliens. One that I came, off, came across was the Ashtar Command. This is a lot of things that I've heard from a lot of the New Age people that live around the world. Y'all should take some time one day just to go around to some of the shops in the Roswell area, you know, different shops. Just sit down and listen. You'd be surprised when you hear it. Now, when you take the word Ashtar, Ashtar is another word that comes from Ashtaroth and Ishtar. And it traces all the way back to Queen, Queen Semiramis. Who was Queen Semiramis? Queen Summer Raymond's was the Babylonian, in so many words, the embodiment of the Babylonian queen that they used to sacrifice to. Do blood rituals, whatever you name it. And her symbol was a white dove. Interesting enough, one of the names that she was called was Z. And I find that very interesting because of the fact the role that Aaliyah was going to play in the Matrix 2, her name was Z. Named after that same Babylonian goddess. And one of Aaliyah's last tattoos was a dove on her arm. Peep the symbolism. See, a lot of people think that symbols are just symbols. No, symbols invoke energy. Especially if you know about sacred geometry, which is placing different symbols that deal with, especially the phallic symbols and symbols of female energy, such as domes, and bringing in certain distorted energy to be used to control and manipulate people. Now, what this is being used to do is to divert individuals' consciousness from seeing the true entities they are. We just got into that a minute ago. Different movies that you, sh you should check out, always look at the outer limits. I look at the outer limits every weekend. It has so much deep symbolism in it, you would not believe. V, Stargate. Now, even though they switched the story up from what it was originally supposed to be, but it dealt with a god that looked like you, which turned out to be reptilian, who flew around in the ship and was controlling people. Simple as that. They know how to place their little pictures and different symbols all through the movies. And some of you are wondering, well, what does that mean? 
Well, what they do, just because you don't pay attention to the symbol, don't mean that it ain't invoking energy. Now, if some of you are deeply in tune, let's say the minute I was to take this off and hang it somewhere where everybody will see it, this whole vibration of this room would change because of the symbol and the energy that this symbol invokes. Now, if I took the same cross or the swastika that the Nazis used and I was to draw it up on this board, it would give out negative energy, but it's all energy. So watch out for symbols. Do research on a symbol. If you wear it, do research on it. You don't know what the heck you're wearing. You got people who wear symbols around their neck that look like guns, don't even know the energy that they're invoking. You see what I'm saying? Okay. The powers that be are doing their best to control us by TV, media, food, education, and through our children. Now, when I ask to travel and when I meditate, when I go to the soul world, so to speak, I see a lot of individuals training for, I mean, like a war. These children that are coming to the planet now, they hell. They are sent here specifically to fight the war. Physically, mentally, and spiritually are all three. We had a time where we could have got rid of everything that's happening here spiritually and emotionally, but it didn't work. So if you don't take care of them on those three levels first, you got to deal with it on the physical, and when you deal with it on the spiritual, you, the physical, you got to deal with all the rest of it. Because anything that occurs, even your thought before something comes into manifestation, it starts in the mental realm or the spirit realm first. Then it makes its way down, coming through the other lower realms to take its shape and form, and then eventually hits the physical world. That's exactly what happened. We could have caught it, but we didn't. So we got to deal with what's happening here. Mm. Now, this is one of the reasons why ancient healing and alternative medicine have been under constant assault by the Manipulated Medical Association. And I say manipulated because if you know anything about the um, Illuminati families, you will find that the, the, the Illuminati family that controls most of what the Medical Association would say and do are the Rockefellers. They own, I think it's Mobile One. They own the oil, period. And they go hand in hand with the bushes. That's why whenever they come to oil, like this thing that's happening over now, happening now at, um, at Gavistan, yeah, they say it's because of this and it's because of that, but it's control over oil. They want to run a pipeline through Russia, through Kosovo, which they had a war in, all the way through the Taliban into what we call the Fertile Crescent, which is Iran and Iraq. And they know in order, for the, in order for them to do that, they got to go in there and wipe those people out, period. Now, it's funny that every one of these cats that they going for, supposedly, like Osama bin Laden um, and Saddam Hussein, at one time, all of these cats used to be CIA agents. And they were used just so they could get into their countries and do whatever they wanted to do. Once they did what they did, we don't need you no more. We'll use you as a scapegoat. And that's exactly what they did. And that's what happens when you make a pact with these people. Now, dealing with the medical association or medicine, period. I know myself personally what natural remedies can do for a person, period. What they put out through the medical association is it, isn't to heal you. It gets you hooked. In so many words, that's your covert drug dealers right there. They get you hooked on this clarity and all this other stuff. I know people who take this stuff one time and they be hooked on it. I need it, I need this, that, this, and that, because they know the effect of how toxic or something that makes you feel good has an effect on a person who contains the carbon-based chemical known as melanin. That's what causes the addiction. Because once you make that body feel good, either through negative means or positive means, that body's gonna want it, and it's gonna fiend for it in so many words. That's why the medical association makes so much money. You got remedies or naturopathic ways, like alcapuncture. I've seen how a person has had alcapuncture done on them 
They were total drug addicts. Once acupuncture was done to them, ain't no drug addict no more. Atul Shakur, one of the ex-Black Panthers, does acupuncture. And he showed and proved how this ancient technique can work in eliminating different diseases, you name it. But they want to make sure that you don't know about that. That's one of the reasons why they got them locked up. Those Black Panthers are not the militant black dudes or the scary ass black people that they want you to think. The Black Panthers, depending on what part, they knew what was going on. Matter of fact, the Black Panthers were working with organizations so that, such as the Native American movement, the Chinese and Japanese American movement, and also different Caucasians or European descended people who wanted to help and knew things were wrong. They don't tell you about that. Because the minute they tell you about that, you see unity between all different races. They don't want that. That's one of the reasons why they created this thing called racism. But one thing you need to understand about racism between the so-called black and white or melanin and melanin deficient, I should go back even before this planet was even in existence. Some of your first beings that were created in the universe before suns were created didn't have it because they didn't need it. And then once we were created and told that we were going to be the ones that sit at the hand of God, that's when the rebellion began. You know, it's just like walking up to me telling me I'm your prized child. I do everything you tell me, and all of a sudden you tell me that this being that's being created on the system of Lyra, that is part human, part God, is going to be given a soul, and that it's going to have dominion, and I don't, and I've been doing all this work for you. I've been doing all this when you get pissed, and that's exactly what happened. You know, to put it in a nutshell, the rebellion, that's what happened. Now, also during this time, you got people on this planet, probably some of y'all in here, who are termed or known as neo-sapiens or neonites. They say, some people say that this is the 13th tribe, depending on what, what way you want to approach it. And it's being said that anything you throw at these new humans, you cannot hurt them. Ain't nothing. Vaccinations, poisoning food, including cook and lie, <laughs> don't matter. You can't kill them. And they know that. They cannot kill them. See, us humans, very, very special. Not only are we combined with what you would call mammalian or mammal and God, we also have certain characteristics of amphibians, because when we're inside the womb, we look like amphibians. Now they tell you reptilian, because some of them are reptilian, but not most of us, you see what I'm saying? But there's nothing to get scared of because it's who we are. Because it's the amphibian and reptoid, well, most of the amphibian skin that allows us to exist in this. Everybody in this camp is a mutant, whether we choose to realize it or not, especially with the stuff they throw at us. Everybody in here is mutated, period. To take this bull, you got to be. Now, with these Neo Sapiens, they're going to be 10 times more powerful and stronger than any human that has ever existed on, a planet, on this planet, including the Titans. And the Titans were the giants from a long time ago that they felt were the bad stuff you could have threw at them. The last thing you need is a human of regular size that can defeat a giant. They don't want that. Because some of them are giants, which I'll get into in another lecture, because that's one of the main bloodlines of the gods. It's said that when you grow, you're not supposed to stop growing at 21, you're supposed to keep growing. Even a couple of my students have told me that over the past three years, I've gotten taller. I'm 27. I'm still getting taller. That means medical science or the medical association wrong about something. They don't know me. They can't study us. That's why they taking prostates out of prisoners and uteruses and trying to examine what the hell they got in them that we ain't got. You see what I'm saying? Because they try, they try to figure out a way to stop us. But you can't. Because one thing about us, if you eliminate humans, especially the deeply melanated ones on this planet, 
this whole planet would cease to exist. We were meant to be the true rulers or the true keepers of the planet and the true defenders. You get rid of the indigenous ones, you're in for a heap of trouble. Because that's when the universe is going to send a wave. And when you send a wave, we're talking about different types of beings. Beings who look half cat, half human, half dog, half human, half reptilian, half amphibian, you name it. If you could think it, it exists. And being the person that I am, in so many words, I've seen these entities. Some of them just as spiritual as the average person. But when they got to kick ass, they'll do it. And that's exactly what they're being trained for. When they come down here and wreak havoc, it's going to be hell, you know. But the neo-humans or the neo-sapiens, we're going to be some of the ones in the fight. Now, it's not to say that all of us are going to be physically fighting. Some of us are going to be fighting more on the higher mental, spiritual, and psychic plane. Because you need to have help on all levels. This crap that's been going on this planet has been going on for too long. It's overdue, and it's time for things to change. Period. You need to start looking within people and seeing who people really are. Because I ain't going to lie. I think I got a couple of reptiles in my family. Period. Because I understand my bloodline and where my people are descended from, I wouldn't be surprised. My parent, my peoples, they weren't slaves. Everybody over here who was dark was not a slave. Was not. Because my family, like other families, own property. Property can't own property. It don't work like that. And even in the Constitution, it tells you in so many words, property can't own property. So if I own some land, that means I'm not property. I've just been told I am, but in actuality, I'm not. I'm not. In actuality, you had different mores of black people over here who had slaves who were just as dark as they were. So don't get caught up in the hype. Don't take their history or his story. You need to do her story, where we truly come from. You need to trace it back to the mother and go from there. Now, vaccines are also being used. They even went so far as to use ELF, extremely low frequency transmitters, to broadcast signals all over the world to delete you from your higher self and disturb your behavior patterns. And as much as some of us may not want to believe it, cell phones are one of these transmitters. See, a cell phone needs your body as an antenna in order to work. Have y'all ever noticed like when you use a cell phone and get extremely hot? The same rays that are hitting that cell phone are the same waves or rays that we use when we put something in the microwave and cook it. So imagine what's happening to you. If you don't have a diode or something that protects you from the radiation, you ask asking for some trouble. Now, I've known a lot of people who look like us in here, it don't harm as bad, but it's starting to because they're increasing because now you got all your different wireless, you know, and all these other different places that use more powerful phones. And they've even went to the point where they will put extra transmitters in your neighborhood. Just look on the top of the trees. Just look and you'll see like these little dishes. You don't see them. You don't see the people when they come put them there, but they get put there. And they get, I mean, you wake up one, that. You see what I'm saying? These cats come out of nowhere. Boop, boop, for all we know, they can slow down time with a machine come in, put them up, and get the heck on out. I wouldn't be surprised what they use. I do not trust these individuals. Now, dealing with the extremely low frequency, one thing I've noticed that when it rains, I get extreme headaches sometimes when it rains. And from what my information tells me, when they are manipulating the weather by the use of higher forms of electricity, you can feel it in the air if you're in tune, and it'll give you an extreme headache. Because it's, electricity is good if you're taking it from the sun, or the, from the sun's rays. You know, that's the, I guess you could say in so many words, the less painful uses. Because anything else we get, anything else we get electricity from now here, they kill it, period. You know, it may not seem that way, but even coal and water has a consciousness. Not to a degree of yours, but it knows that it's water. It knows that it's here to do a purpose. They have to take things, they have to destroy the earth in order to make electricity. 
See, that way, with them using that way to generate energy, not only does it make them money, but it hurts you in the process. And until we can get to using a higher form of energy on this planet, probably never be able to escape it. This is one of the reasons why they got the power lines over your head. Sets up a grid. And this grid is almost like a force field. And if you ain't at a certain state of consciousness, you can't get those rays. You can't get that consciousness coming out. But I'm noticing that a lot of people are. So I'm not alone in this. It's just that, you know, sometimes when it seems like you're the only one in the family or the only one in your pack of friends that know what you know, it may seem as though that you're alone. But being on the radio and meeting people, I find that I'm not. So feel very good about that. Somebody else can, can go along in this war, as we may call it. They, they even want to implement the installation and use of microchips in the brain. You can see an example of this. There's a TV show, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, that comes on. And they got this one vampire who was bad named Spike. And in order to keep him from harming humans, they put a chip in his head so that he couldn't transform and use all his vampire powers against a human. But he can use it against a vampire. Now, that's just a prelude to what they can do with these chips. They can put these chips in your head, beam an extremely low frequency from the satellites. That's why they've been trying to increase satellite usage. And it could beam and shut off the part of your brain that takes in the higher energy, just, which is right here in what they call the spirit valley. If they can block your energy from coming through that crown chakra, you're in trouble. Now, let's see. Also dealing with more mind control, the educational system of today and of the future is designed to teach left brain function only. It, also, it is also designed to keep individuals from accessing right brain function. Okay. Now with Bush's new so-called educational bill, they're trying to eliminate anything that causes a person to go from within and learn things. They, they're trying to get rid of arts and crafts and anything that uses a person's innate creative ability. And what that does, if you're not using it, it shuts off the right brain, which controls the feminine or the absorption of energy, and they'll lock you in this one, left brain. See, when working with mind control, and that's probably going to be my next, le next lecture, dealing with the um, aspects of mind. Okay. Dealing with the... Uh, <laughs> my fault. Dealing with that, if they can get you to start concentrating more on left brain things, which is consenting to working a job every day and everyday routine, they can shut you off from this part of the brain and keep you from accessing your higher self. Another way that they're going to divert consciousness is to create and instigate wars and conflicts against other countries and religious sects for the purposes of globalization. In 1998, it was predicted that the powers that be was going to wage war against the Islamic world and to push the Chinese into global conflict to cause fear and force the world into a one or a new world disorder. You see that now. This is a part of what is called Project Blue Beam. Also with this project, it is said that the laser generators used for the so-called Star Wars defense system can be used to generate holographic images of UFOs, religious saviors. This, this is one of the reasons why the mainstream religion, the religions can't see eye to eye and realize that they're under the same control. Now during the Gulf War, remember that you're going in another person's home. You coming to my home trying to fight me, I'm going to know my home better than you. I don't give a damn how much manpower you got. But all of a sudden, when this, world, then when this war started, they showed the different Muslims holding their hands up and walking towards the American soldiers. It's said that with the increase of the chemtrail sprays, that this can put a film in the air so dense to the point that you can shine laser beams off of it and make images. See, the crap that we see at Stone Mountain is just a prelude. They were just seeing what it actually worked. Now they can do it with different colors and things and make it seem like Allah has come out of the sky, which is what they said they did, you know? Now, 
This same major technology is also being used to create false crop circles. The main and most important reason for Project Blue Beam is to prepare and supposedly warn humanity of an extraterrestrial attack from enemies from beyond the stars. Now the enemies are all now the enemies have already been here and have been here for millions of years. They represent the rulership of the lower but higher dimensional entities. Now, if the masses of people are not conscious to what's going on, they'll fall for it. Example. Now remember what they talk about with the war of the worlds? Remember that? Um, the Martians attacking? It was a radio broadcast first because everybody didn't have TVs back then. And when everybody heard that broadcast over the radio, it was so real to the point that people were in their cars, jammed in traffic, trying to escape. And they know it can work. That's one of the main reasons that Orson Welles read it. It was a test to see what would actually happen if something like this was done. Now, let's see. Let's go past that. Now, along with this, you got another report called Report from Iron Mountain. Report from Iron Mountain is a group of 15 scientists and experts in various fields that were brought together in 1963 during the Kennedy administration to put together different reports on how to control the population and centralize world powers without the use of wars. Okay. Call Report from Iron Mountain because of the name of the underground facility that they met in New York State. Two of the main recommendations to control the world was one, threat to the global environment, and two, threat from an extraterrestrial invasion. They are strongly going with the extraterrestrial thing because, number one, they want you to think that aliens are out to get you and conquer the world, but the truth is they've already been here, even before you were born. The powers that be know this, but here's the kicker. The powers that be have been doing their own research in science, you know, with prophecy and different things like that, and what they have discovered with this so-called fake-ass war that they're going to try to instigate, the reason why I've been put on hold is because of the fact they know whatever you want to call our ancestors or whatever you want to call them, they're coming. And there's been reported that back in 1995, after NASA sent a probe up to Jupiter to try to open up its clouds to see what was there, I guess that was like the last damn straw. Ever, ever since 1995, there were three humongous objects the size of Texas that was heading towards this planet at unbelievable speeds. Once they got past, past the moon, they stopped. That's why they was trying to, you know, do different movies like with Armageddon mm -hmm. and the other movie talking about a comet. No damn comet. That's some, somebody up there. And they stopped. Now, NASA has even gone to the point where they will put copper diodes in the atmosphere trying to block out energy, and it ain't worked. They scared, I mean, we were supposed to supposedly be to Mars at least by 1992. That crap been shut in half. See, space ain't no free place where anybody can roam. Anybody can roam. If you up to some negativity, they ain't gonna let your ass by. That's why they shot down that space shuttle with that black man on the back and I forget what year it was. Yeah, it shot down Challenger. That wasn't no accident. Beings or so many words shot that sucker down because I guess they felt, hey, we put a person with more melanin on the ship, we can get by with it. Mm -mm. Don't work like that. It doesn't work like that. Just because you sacrifice an indigenous person don't mean crap. If you're doing something that's gonna harm individuals, you're gonna get got. But see, the reason why the most of us don't most of us don't see it because we're not conscious of things. We're concentrating on church, our paychecks, in the club, when we're gonna have sex neck, when we're gonna go to sleep. And who's gonna win the damn Super Bowl? <laughs> That's what we're concentrating on. They don't want you at all to think about anything deeper than what goes on outside of you, because the minute you start stimulating the thought process, they don't have you no more. Even your weirdest idea has truth. It's just that we've been taught for so long that the imagination and different things like that are bad. You break down the word imagination is image in action. What image are you putting into action or what are you creating 
with imagery to bring into manifestation. That's what it means. That's one of the reasons why they want to lock your left brain from accessing the right brain so that you don't use any of your creative powers, your true powers, the power that you would, you were given to come here to exercise and deal with. See, humans don't realize that everything we touch from a rock to a piece of paper to another human, we spiritualize. It's in our DNA to do that. We give power to things. And they know that, and since they're not originators and they can't pull the energy in themselves, they have to use us to do it. That's why they had the different rituals, the Super Bowls, you name it, you know? And so, to conclude this, I want to basically give you all some suggested reading <coughs> and different things that you could partake of to help you in this, um, I ain't going to necessarily say struggle, but in this chaos that's going on. One thing that you should make it, make very, very dear to get, number one, you need to get an herb that is called chlorella. That's C-H-L-O-R-E-L-L-A. Fresh green water algae. You will not believe the stuff that this thing helps to clear up. Acne, cancer, helps with the liver, sore throat, mouth, constipation, gas, high blood pressure. Cleanses the blood. Okay? Another thing you should get is cell salts. Cell salts help. They feed all the organs of the body and help you to eliminate waste much quicker and help you to regenerate cells. Everything from blood, muscle, fiber, tissue, uh, making your bones stronger, you name it. Another thing you should get is kelp. That's K, well, let me make sure, kelp. It's K, yeah, thank you. <laughs> and this helps to protect you from radiation you don't need that may hinder you from raising in consciousness. Well, spirulina is good, but the Corella has more amino acids than spirulina. It has more complex vitamins in it. This is the same stuff that they talked about in the Matrix, even though they had this sludge, but they called it, it, it basically said it was a synthetic um, mixture of vitamins, protein, minerals, all the body needs. That's what they were talking about. But they put that sludge in your face and made you think there was some type of nasty crap you had to eat. Uh-uh. That's the illusion. What it is is corrupt, you know. And if it weren't for a brother that's sitting in the crowd, I wouldn't have known that. Another thing you should do after, after we finish filming, you can come up and see these books that I have up here, which will be very instrumental in raising your level of planet X. It's been talked about a lot on the Art Bell Show because you got a lot of people out there freaking out. You know, oh, a, planet, a planet toy coming close. It said that every time we've had a pole shift and every time we have had a change, this particular planet was present, or this planetoid. Now, um, a lot of people call it the 12th planet is the 13th planet. There are 12 planets in the solar system, just like there are 12 planets in any other solar system that's dealing with third density. Significant number. One plus two is three. You're dealing with the three levels or the three main levels of a human. That's physical, mental, spiritual. Get me? So that's basically what you're dealing with here. Now, from what my research serves me, it said that the Anunnaki had control of Nibiru or the 13th planet, so to speak. Now, when I've come up on research, the Anunnaki don't look that good from certain perspectives. You know, because this is where it is said where some of the so-called powers that be or, or where they true form has resided. But I've also been told that there was a war even going on for that planet and eventually it was taken over by the forces of good. Now whenever this planet comes forth, you ain't got no choice but to change. And they said that a lot of people have left the planet whenever this planet has come close. They said one of the ways to escape some of the catastrophes here is to either, in so many words, hop a ride on that planet or go within the planet. But you have to remember, if any of these things are going to take place, you got to have a certain vibration. Because when, it, when they send these ships, 
these ships don't deal with, um, you know, landing on the planet because some of them are so powerful to the point where dealing with our density, if they touch the planet, they might not be able to lift off because the, the negative electromagnetic field that they place. So most times if they landing, they beam you up. Now, if you see a saucer or a ship that lands on the ground, you watch out for their asses. Because right. those are the ones that have been supposedly kidnapping the people. You know, they're supposed to come down and they beam you on. If you ain't at a certain rate of vibration and certain consciousness, you burn up. Simple as that. So probably the best bet, they say, is to escape into the underground caverns. But you got to have a certain consciousness to go there too. But like I say, don't be alarmed because all of you are thinking that way. So if it's really needed for you to escape, spirit's going to tell you. And if spirit does tell you, someone will come and make a way so you can get on, period. And let's see, to expound more on Planet X, now they say that the planet is supposed to be coming next month in May. But see, they said that a couple of years ago they were supposed to come May, five, May, May 2000 on the 5th. They don't know. Don't listen to these scientists. Now, I heard, I heard, I've heard that it's supposed to pass close, but not so close where it would destroy the whole planet. There was a movie made back in the 60s called um, when, World Colli when Worlds Collide. And this basically dealt with them knowing about this planet, this red planet flying through the solar system, and they figured their best bet to escape the upheaval is to build a rocket ship and go on the planet. But everybody couldn't go, so they had to select certain people in order to get on the ship to go and get on it. Okay, and then eventually they went to the planet and found that there was all types of vegetation better than the Earth and blah, 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 and all this stuff. Then you have another version of that same planetoid, which is the Death Star that you see in Star Wars. You know, and this is why it would get real deep. Because you got certain beings that travel around on artificial planetoids with high sophisticated weaponry, you know. And they have said that this is probably what Planet X is. I don't know, I won't know till it come around. You know, if it does. I'm not doubting people's you know, I'm not doubting their projections or whatever, but if I don't feel it here, it ain't no threat to me. Once I feel it here in the soul, then I'll worry about it, because I'll let spirit guide me to that. You see what I'm saying? I'm not, when, they, when they're trying to cause a panic among people, they want to feel your energy. That's the same thing they did with Aaliyah's death, period. Princess Diana death. Create a, create a situation where a lot of people have to give up their energy. They feed off of that. And that's what keeps them in power. You know, they're physical vampires, but they're energetic vampires. It's just like the Y2K thing. Remember how many people were sacrificing themselves and going out and buying this and buying that? I'm not saying that you, still, you shouldn't store food. It's always good to have something extra in the pantry. But don't put something extra just because somebody else told you to. Do it because you want to. See, when you allow other people to move you whenever they feel like it, you're not using your God-given power, having a free soul and will to do what you want to do. You're letting somebody else guide you. You know, different than a dog on a leash. You see what I'm saying? But see, going to fourth density, you have to know these things or the term hell on earth would literally be for you. Pay attention to the animals. Your domestic cats and dogs or other animals that humans take as pets, one of the smartest cats on the planet right now. Because what they're doing, the more and more we be around them and the more and more we touch them, the more and more they become spiritualized. When we go for density, that same cat that's stuffed in that basket, when you wake up 2012 or whenever this occurs, a cat might be a humanoid or might be on a higher manifestation to the point you go, this ain't the same cat. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> and it's already been some recorded. Egyptian walls, other knowledge that there are other beings out there who are half human or half man or God and half animal. Personally, I think the reason for this was because 
if you're going to be truly, to me, a manifestation of God, you need to know both worlds. You need to know the higher world, you need to know the lower world. Especially if you're going to be helping other beings throughout the cosmos. You need to understand emotions. Not to be ruled by them, but to control them. Not to suppress them. Because if you suppress your emotions, they ain't no different than the Vulcans on Star Trek. When something build up and they can't handle it, they snap out. And they go crazy. And it's just about impossible to stop them. That's what you do when you try to contain and suppress your emotions. If you're going through something, let the feeling manifest. Understand why you feel like that. Don't think that it's weak because you're going through something. you meant to go through that. That's how you learn. You see what I'm saying? Don't let nobody else dictate you know, to you what you should do. Overstand the emotion. That way, when that situation arises again, you can handle it better. We're meant to make mistakes so we can learn again. Life is a big classroom. See, we'll deal with the perks and all the things that come that are good about life, but as soon as we have to go through a struggle or a challenge, we don't want that. You see what I'm saying? You got to go through the challenge to know the other side. You see what I'm saying? There's Without struggle, there's no progress. And that's a true statement, no matter how you want to stay. You have to go through the negative to understand the positive. Period. The best thing for you to do is not to get wrapped up in negative emotions and allow your, allow your emotions to control you. That's the best advice that I can offer for that. You know, if you men, if you're a little sensitive, fine, be sensitive. You know you better than I know you. Feel your emotions. Go through your emotions. Because it's the emotions that help to set stuff in action. See, they don't tell you that. A lot of your people who have been on the radio claim to have supposed knowledge. Tell you, oh, you can wield this to you. You can have this and have it. But they don't ever tell you how. Because one of the main reasons why they don't want to tell you how is because the fact they got this fear that you would surpass them. But every generation is supposed to surpass the ones that brought them forth. That's how evolution works. Every person coming to the planet is supposed to learn something from the older ones and go on. And then others come and they go on. That's how the cycle works. You can't keep holding stuff to you and thinking that people don't deserve knowledge. Throw it at them. See how they handle it. If they don't think about it now, tomorrow, eventually they will. You have to let that person go through whatever they go through to acquire the knowledge that they got to. You can't hold nothing back. You see what I'm saying? They got us thinking that just because we got a certain amount of, you know, melanin in our skin and in our organs and that we eat a certain way and dress a certain way, that we spiritual. Hold on. You ain't. It takes your state of consciousness. That's what makes you spiritual. You are mental or spiritual first before you were physical. When it comes down to it, that's the overlying principle. You tap in the spirit. You can control the rest down here. All of this would be a sense once you grasp in the spirit. But if you're trying to go through spirituality through the physical and the physical only, you're going to have issues. And the only way that you can feel that you're powerful is through the control of money, power, and technology. And with the proper, without the proper knowledge and consciousness to control those things, you can destroy a planet as well as the individuals on that planet. But I guess now, you know, if there's not any more questions or mind-boggling thoughts on the people's mind, I guess we'll go ahead and conclude it here. You know, if there's, I'm feeling some vibe. Somebody out there want to say something. You know. Has anyone, like you said before, go in a room and sit down, don't have no radio, no TV on, and you can hear your body beat? I actually hear my body vibrate like like my pineal gland. Now my pineal gland, most times I can hear over a radio, depending on what's being projected on there. But when you get to the point where your whole body vibrate, where that same pulse you can hear throughout the whole body, you've done what you're supposed to do. No matter what you've gone through, you did what you're supposed to do. And don't let nobody else dictate to you that you need to do it this way or that way. You do it your way. That's true freedom. That's free will. You do it the way, the best way you can. Simple as that. But, oh, yeah. Oh boy, you 
You sure you want to talk about that on camera? Yeah. <laughs> you sure, you know, because they try to. I can't figure out what the third element is. That's my, that's my problem. Well, you got, let's see, you got the liquid gold or colloidal gold, then you got the, the white powdery gold, and then you got colloidal silver. Silver. Silver, these things that you could you could take and they really help to stimulate and build up, you know, the unification of your DNA. And once you can work with the DNA, the rest of the body ain't got no choice but to change. You control that. You see what I'm saying? So yeah, I, I do it's hard to get though. I know of someone who has it, but you'll have to um get in touch with me so I can give you the number and see if he still offer those products. Right, because the powers that be that are controlling you, in order for them to stay and they see the power, they take it. Mm -hmm. That's why they want to take it off the market so they can have it so much to themselves. These same gold chains that we go fighting over and thinking of something, drinking this crap. They putting this crap in their bodies. And we over here fighting over platinum and all this stuff, and they taking that same stuff. This is one of the main reasons why they've been raping Africa for so long, especially in the gold mines. Taking this stuff, it gives them their ability to do the so-called miraculous things that they can do, which is on a lower nature compared to most other beings on the un in the universe. But that's what they do, you know. There's some um, there's a website that I can give you once the camera's off, and you may be able to find it there, you know. You know, sometimes. Really? Wow. I didn't know it got it. I didn't know it went that but hey, you never know. If you want something and you call out for it, it'll manifest. You just gotta be be ready to accept it wherever it goes, you know, wherever it comes. I've seen it advertised on the internet. I asked the herbalist about it, and he looked at me like I was crazy, but they knew what I was asking about when I stepped in there. You know, when I said that he was huh? You gotta leave. Why I gotta leave? I just asked you a question. You know, you got to go. You got to, you got to get out of here. But you being taped or something, you know? <laughs> but you'd be, you'd be surprised. They put things in places where you wouldn't normally look, period. In books, and now on the internet. Because a lot of people don't like to read, you know? A lot of people, uh-huh. Yeah, I've been noticing that too. They might be in Japanese, they might be in um, Spanish or... Yeah, that, that way, it's not happening in other languages yet, but in English, when you get it, they change it certain words around it. They give them a synonym or something close to it, but it's not the true language. Right. It's missing a lot of the true knowledge that it's supposed to be given. Yep, I, I, like I say, I've seen examples of that myself. Especially on very heavy um, websites. It's even gotten so deep to the point where they do it for any site. And this is what I mean, for example. I don't know how many of you in here look at it, but I am a Dragon Ball Z fan. I love it. Because Dragon Ball Z has a lot of the knowledge contained in this one cartoon on how to elevate yourself. Now that a lot of older people are grasping to it, they starting to encrypt the websites now. Because I've even been told by someone that the word saying, or say as they call it in the cartoon, just mean power of the dark one. Whatever dark one you want to choose, hey, it's up to you. It's up to your state of consciousness. But, you know, basically it deals with the power of the dark one. You know? And I know they ain't talking about no evil one. Because every time you say word dark or black, it don't mean negative. You know? That's what they want you to believe. But it isn't. There's a lot of pay attention. They're trying to put different TV shows out. Like I noticed for a minute, 
I really thought the Power Rangers were stupid at first. But when I sat down with my nephew one day and really paid attention to what was being shown on there, I started noticing how like all the Power Rangers always had different colors that correspond to the chakra system and how they called upon certain powers. You had the Power Rangers that affiliated with the ancient dinosaurs or, or prehistoric entities. Then you had, the, you had the Power Rangers that affiliated with the ancient Egyptian energy, with the Japanese energy, Chinese energy. You know what the hell they doing. And, and they even went from time force, so they even went to other plants, and now when the deepest one come out, wild force, they take it off TV in certain areas. But I have been able to read information that people have given to me on it. It takes place in like a jungle. And in this jungle, I heard in the TV series, they got various pyramids and different geometrical shapes all up in the jungle. And there's a reason why it ain't on the air. Because my nephew can look at something and he can tell me stories about it. And he ain't even four years old. He telling me, be like, well, that's this and that's that. He'd be explaining to me what it means. He told me what a pyramid means. I know, I know what it stands for, but to listen to a four-year-old tell you what it means, that's deep. That shows that the souls that are coming to this planet are very in tune, and they're here for very special purposes. My nephew is a weird one now. Don't get me wrong. I thought I was all that ball. My, my nephew is a weird one. But that's his way that he masks what he really knows. You know, my sister be like, oh, he just playing. I be like, if you only knew, if you only knew. He watches my classes when I'm teaching my students at the house. And you know, most times I think he ain't sinking it in to somebody mess with him at his school and he have to hurt somebody, you know? And it trips me out because I'm like, man, all he doing is watching me. Imagine if I actually sat down and really taught him the power he can have. Because he's a little strong, very strong. My, uh, both of my nephews are strong. It, it's like a, my, my other nephew, my brother's son, looked like he was lifting weights in the womb. Like when he was getting ready to be here, he was bench pressing the umbilical cord because when he came out, he had a solid body you know, and a full head of hair. I'm like, what the? Yeah, he had a fro when he came out. I knew what he was there for, you know? <laughs> but it's just to say, you know, pay attention to children, no matter how weird their stories or anything sound. They'll tell on themselves that they did something bad, so that's a good thing, but pay attention. Those are the new gods. Well, really we're going to wrap it up this time. We really got to wrap it up now, so let's go ahead and end this thing. If you got any more questions, just come to the front. I'll be here for a minute or two. Pierre kicks me out, so, you know. <laughs>